My name is Sue Higginson and I'm the Acting Principal Solicitor at EDO New South Wales. The New South Wales Government currently has on exhibition its white paper, um, which is the basis for an entirely new planning system in New South Wales. The planning system in New South Wales is a very relevant component of, it, of everyday life. It affects the natural environment, the built environment, and very much makes the social fabric of the New South Wales community. Of course it has a very legal component to it as well. So currently on exhibition with the white paper is the exposure bill, what the New South Wales planning law will look like for the next period of time. Bringing communities to planning decisions is very much the ethos of the white paper. Through our analysis so far of the white paper and of the exposure bill, um, in terms of the litigation arm of EDO New South Wales, one of the analysis we have is that the exposure bill has what we refer to as a privative clause. So a privative clause has the impact of limiting to varying extents the ability of members of the community to have recourse to the courts of New South Wales in the event that there is a legal problem with a decision that's been made, a planning decision or a development decision that's been made that will affect the local environment. In terms of that limitation, at the moment what it appears is that the legislation is presenting to the courts a limitation and a, a direction and a guide on the court's discretion when it's being asked to look at decisions that are being alleged to have a legal error in the way that decision was made. Now in our view this is, this is a relatively serious barrier and a serious limitation on the court's involvement in the decisions made in New South Wales. In a system of democracy it's important that the courts are independent and that they have the full capacity to review decisions where there's been an allegation of a legal error, an error made at law in the procedures that are, ought to be followed by decision makers. One thing that's really important to note about this is that we know from the last 27 years of the planning um, system that we have that the times when communities do go to the courts and involve the courts as that independent umpire of our, our legal system of decision making, it's very, very rare. It's rare people access the courts. They do so as an absolute last resort. And they do so when they have been involved with the decision making process from very, very early on. And they're very involved with that process. They go to the courts only when they have sought comprehensive and complex legal advice and that advice confirms that there is some reasonable prospect of succeeding in a court um, because it involves some legal error or some novel question that the courts need to answer in order to provide guidance to decision makers into the future. And again, these matters are normally only brought to the court where they're serious and there's likely to be serious impacts on the environment. Um, and these matters haven't been considered properly. So at the moment we see the clause as a serious clause. We, um, we would be urging people in the community to put pen to paper and make a submission about the type of system that they want. Do we want to be able to access the courts? And for the courts to have its full discretion about reviewing decisions made by decision makers. Um, we're, certainly, we're certainly engaging with the Minister's office on this very point and we see this as a matter of um, some seriousness.